Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Asheville Tech Media, and thank you for joining us for this Roadcast video. I'm joined today by Andy Walker, who is the VP for Product for Spin Transfer Technologies. Andy, thank you for having us in your offices My today. My pleasure. So tell us about MRAM and why it's so important today. So the industry, the semiconductor industry, is trying to find uh, ways of embedding uh, non-volatile memory. So uh, magnet magnetic RAM has become the favorite uh, of many, many big companies to replace existing solutions. It turns out to be cheaper, more reliable, uh, easier to embed into standard uh, silicon processes, um, and it is uh, uh, moving uh, with a momentum which is highly unusual in the semiconductor industry. What kind of capacities can uh, an end user see in a device or a server or whatever with the kind of technology we're talking about here? We're, we're talking uh, megabits to gigabits of, of memory here. Very good. Yeah. Um, and what is, what is it? Like, what is MRAM? for a, a lay person. Okay, so it's, uh, it's like a, a, a two-terminal device, it's like a resistor, and it can be switched from a high resistance to a low resistance state and back again many millions and billions of times. Um, and then it can keep its state even if the, the power is removed from the chip. So it's a real non-volatile solution, uh, very straightforward with the physics of the magnetic materials very well understood as well. Is it is it akin to disk at all because of the magnetic nature of it? Because yes. at least with flash, you're looking at a, a, a silicon wafer with with a, a electron trap. Right. But with disk, you're looking at flipping bits. Yes. So it's uh, uh, regular flash uses the storage of electrons um, and the readout of that in a in a transistor kind of uh, approach. Uh, this is uh, um, the the spin of the electrons is used to flip the the resistance state of the material. So it's a different technique uh, uh, and highly unusual. It's a, it's a, it's a paradigm shift in non-volatile memories. When we look at disk, one of the challenges with it from a long-term archival standpoint is that the, over time it degrades. What happens with MRAM over long periods of time uh, does it stay pretty stable for a long yeah. period of time? Yeah, so it, there are two uh, parameters which are very important. Uh, one is endurance and one is retention. So the endurance is how many times can you switch it between the high resistance state and the low resistance state and back again. So it turns out MRAM, this is the unusual thing about MRAM, MRAM can switch uh, billions of times. Um, and uh, uh, when, when you compare that to flash, for example, NAND flash is uh, a few hundred to a few thousand times, and the best uh, flash out there is about a million times. So we're talking about orders of magnitude better reliability when it comes to endurance. Now when it comes to retention, uh, it's how long can it keep that state uh, without the, uh, the power applied to the chip and at hot temperature, like 85 degrees centigrade. So uh, standard embedded uh, MRAM is about 10 years. Uh, our, uh, our technology allows it to uh, switch at lower voltage and it can boost the endurance by uh, a few billions of, uh, of cycles um, and it uh, maintains its retention capability. So that's the highly unusual thing about our technologies when added to MRAM. When we look at NAND flash, um, and that's, I mentioned that again because it's a very common technology, mm -hmm. and whenever you put it through a PE cycle, a program erase cycle, you're, you're physically damaging the substrate. So it sounds like it's a, is, the, is the, the bit flipping in MRAM a destructive process, but just at a much lower level than, than yeah. flash still? So actually the physics is very similar. Okay. In, uh, in, in NAND flash, we're talking about electrons tunneling through a thin oxide, a thin silicon dioxide, mm -hmm. and that leads to a wear out mechanism in the silicon dioxide after a few hundred to a few thousand cycles. Um, in MRAM, we're actually tunneling electrons through a thin uh, magnesium oxide, which is th much thinner than the, the flash uh, silicon dioxide. And the wear out mechanism, mechanism is much less. So we're, we're talking about billions of cycles before we see any damage to that oxide. Very good. Now when we look at the market, let's move it up a little bit. Um, who is this good for? This is good for um, 
uh, anybody who wants to, first of all, to embed non-volatile memory uh, within a chip. So uh, many microcontrollers use uh, embedded non-volatile memory to store code and, and data. So uh, that's the first, the first step. So there are billions of chips out there that need that capability and that the advanced uh, CMOS technology knows at 28 nanometer and beyond. Uh, so embedded MRAM is primarily for those uh, kind of applications. Now, uh, with our technology, we allow that to be uh, extrapolated to replace SRAM. So SRAM is a, is a, 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 a static power hungry beast in the in and a, volatile and volatile, right? So you can imagine if we have the technology that uh, that tr uh, allows MRAM to replace SRAM with with retention capability, then we have something really big. So. Then you, you start to change the, the paradigm of, the, of memory. You're starting to take over uh, other types of memory. So we see MRAM as initially coming in as embedded non-volatile, and then with our technologies, we can start to uh, take over SRAM and then ultimately DRAM. Now there's other companies in the MRAM space look at working on things. What separates spin transfer technologies from some of the other companies that are working on similar technology? Right. So what we have is uh, we have basically two fundamental technologies which are different from what others have. The first one is uh, a circuits only solution which uh, uh, adds to anybody's MRAM. So for example, if a foundry comes out with their sol MRAM solution, we can then wrap our circuits around that solution and boost the endurance towards SRAM capability, keeping uh, uh, the retention capability. Nobody else has that capability. And that, that has arisen from uh, uh, the synergy between uh, uh, magnetics experts and circuits experts. So that's one thing. The second thing that we have uniquely is uh, something called the, uh, the polarizer. And this is a, a, a magnetic material solution which allows the speed up of switching uh, and uh, allowing retention capabilities to be maintained as well. So those are two unique uh, capabilities, IP from this company that nobody, nobody seems to have. Andy, thank you very much for this introduction to Great. MRAM. Great, my pleasure. And thank you to our audience for watching this Roadcast video.